Hey everyone, welcome back to Casey 3D Sparks. Today we are going to be going over how to create some monster tentacles using the ray modifier and the curve modifier. So I'm going to group them together in probably maybe about three tentacles and have them emerging out of some water. So we will go ahead and start with this default cube. And in my scene, I'm going to be using inches. I'm not gonna worry about the size of the cube at all because I'm just going to resize the whole mini itself after I've modeled everything. So with that being said, let's go ahead and tab right into edit mode. Let's go into the front view, hit five to get out of perspective mode. And we are going to cut this cube in half by hitting control R and hit escape so it stays right in the center. I'm gonna go into wireframe view and select these vertices and hit X to delete. Perfect, so it's now it's nice and cut in half. I'm going to switch over to face view and get these two faces and we are going to delete them as well. Okay, and then go back at the vertices. We're going to go ahead and curve the back a little bit. Maybe about there looks good. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more square first. So let's grab this, pull that out. About there looks good. So go ahead, grab these four vertices back, hit E to extrude, size that in a good amount. Hit E to extrude, and we're just going to pull that out along the Y axis. A little more. I want it to be a little dramatic since we are 3D printing it. And E to extrude, we're going to size that back in again. E to extrude, and we're going to pull that back along the Y axis again. Perfect. So all we need to do now is go into our modifier tab. We are going to do mirror. Go ahead and apply the clipping, and then you can make sure that it nothing pulls apart perfect next we are going to add our array modifier so the default obviously we are not going to keep for the count i'm going to go ahead and do 20. this is you know whatever your preference is i just like 20 i think it's a good starting point we're going to change x to zero and we're going to change z to one and we will also hit merge then we'll go ahead and add our subdivision surface modifier and crank that up to wherever you feel is the most appropriate, kind of like that one. Awesome, so there is the beginning of our tentacle. Nice and round on the back. I like this basic shape. Cool, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this. So while I'm in object mode, I'm going to go ahead and apply my mirror modifier and apply my array modifier. I'm going to leave subsurf off for now so I can go back into edit mode and cap off the tentacle itself. And then we'll worry about the sizing since right now it is a straight column. I want it to come out a little bit. So we'll do that in just a second after we cap off the top. So I'm going to do alt right click the top ring of vertices and we're going to hit E to extrude, size that in, E to extrude again, size that in, Alt M at center to bring that into a nice point. Perfect. Okay. So there's the end of our tentacle. Now what we'll do is grab the opposite end. We're going to go down here to proportional editing and we'll do connected. When we will size this, ooh, let's make our ring much bigger. And we're not going to size along the Z axis, so hit shift to Z so it sizes along the X and Y axis only. And I want it to be a little dramatic again, like I said, but not too much. I like that. I think that looks good. Let's keep it that way. Of course, you know, do whatever you feel is best for your tentacle. We're going to go ahead, tap back out of edit mode. All right. And then all we have to do 
is add our curves. So since this is all done, we can go ahead and apply our subdivision surface modifier. Then we need to add our curve. So we'll go Shift A, Curve, and we're gonna do Path. So what we'll do is, I don't want it lying against the X axis. So we're gonna go into Front View and we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and just move it over here so I can see it. And we're gonna tab into edit mode. Now, if you've never modeled curves before, the path one isn't too crazy to do. All you do is basically grab these vertices points and manipulate them in any way you want. The BZA curves are the ones that will have handles along these vertices. And kind of like when you think about Illustrator, when you move it, it'll move the curve and that's what it reminds me of. So, anywho, we're gonna go ahead, oops, don't forget to turn off proportional editing and start making this a little bit like that. Of course, this is basically however you want it. And the same with a regular mesh, just hit E to extrude, grab it. This isn't very dramatic at all, I know. Let's try like that. And just have a little fun with this. Let's try that. Of course, you can always do it a little bit differently and you can actually manipulate it even when the modifier is on there as well. Okay, let's try that out. So right click back onto your regular mesh. We are going to add a curve modifier. So after you add the curve modifier, we will go ahead and select the path that we did. <laughs> um, it looks a little funny, right? So what we have to do is move the mesh to where we need it. Okay. That's interesting. Maybe like that. Well, I kind of like that. That looks nice. So if you'll notice, it, if you tap back into edit mode, your vertices are still in the exact same spot. All it's doing is manipulating the mesh so that way it's coming out like this. So obviously once we're happy with the shape, we can apply this. But first, before we apply that, because I want a couple of these, I wanna go ahead and duplicate it first. We're gonna move it over here. Don't worry about how it looks at the moment. Um, we'll go ahead and apply this because that's perfect. This I'm going to push over here and we'll go ahead and grab this. And what we can do is either move this or let's reshape this a little bit. So grab, how do we want this? Ooh, I kind of like that is neat maybe no okay i like that maybe move them both up a little bit so right now i'm kind of just envisioning how my base would be about right here so i'll probably end up cutting off part of this tentacle and just having this part above the grid i'm pretending this my actual grid is the base, so below the grid, I'll probably end up cutting off. So I like this. I might have to move this down a little bit, honestly. Oh, and after you apply the curve modifier, you'll probably want to move your origin back to the geometry. Dang it. There we go. There we go. I like that a lot. So we'll go ahead and apply this one. Oops, no we aren't. We want to duplicate it one more time first. Apply this, grab our curve. And see what we wanna do next.
Awesome, I like that a lot. So we're gonna go and apply this and then I'm just going to go ahead and hide my path. So next, add our base. So first we'll do our circle. Let's go into top view, grab this. And we're gonna size this up to however big your base you want. So I want it a little bit bigger than the tentacles themselves so I can add in some waves to the top of the base. Awesome, I like that. So let's hit E to extrude after we go into edit mode. Bring that down. And then we will go ahead, hit E to extrude, size it in a little bit, and then just face that off. And we're going to do the same here, E to extrude, size it in, Bring it up a little bit, size it, bring it down, E to extrude. Okay, so I'm just moving some of the vertices around to make it look like the water is being manipulated by these tentacles that are popping out of the water. Awesome. So I like that. Nothing too crazy, but hopefully something dramatic enough that the 3D printer can show. Awesome. Okay, so now I can go ahead, cut off the bottoms of these tentacles. So we're just going to border select where I need it, X, vertices, tab back out, grab this one, make sure nothing's selected. Perfect. Now we can apply our subdivision surface modifier, add three Boolean union modifiers. Go ahead and select everything. Apply rotation and scale, make sure our Booleans are going to be able to attach properly. Hide our cubes. Perfect, looks good. And there is our simple tentacle monster for our next D&D session. Awesome, so of course, if you wanted this to be just out in the ocean, you know, you could print it as is. If you wanted it to be much smaller and it's coming out of like a well or something, you could add like a stone wall around your water base or there's plenty of different options that you could do with this. I mean, you could do many more tentacles or different things like that. So I like it as is. I think this is pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and test print this after I resize it. So since right now it's, um, you know, almost two feet, I think that's a little bit too big for my printer. So after I size it way down to maybe about three inches or so, we'll test print this. Let me know how yours come out or if you have any other different ways that you would have done the tentacles, let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I really appreciate any requests or anything like that. And I will see you guys next week.